little. Merci, Jim, pour m'avoir ici. Uh, thanks a lot for having me here. Je ne peux pas vraiment parler français, mais uh, après, si vous voulez avoir les uh, poissons, je peux parler mieux. OK. So, uh, thanks. It only, took, it only took six years of practice to learn that one phrase. Um, Thank you guys so much for coming. I know you have a choice. Oh, it's a single track conference. So you don't have a choice of talks. You're forced to come and listen to me, uh, which I appreciate. Uh, I flew from Los Angeles this morning. Uh, we'll see how this goes. So what I want to talk to you about today is how you can think about serverless in 2018 uh, versus 2014. Uh, so we released Lambda on stage at reInvent in 2014 uh, in Verger's keynote. And I remember there was like one half of the audience that totally got it. They were like, this is the greatest thing ever, this is awesome. For what it's worth, there was a company called Iron.io, and they still exist, um, that was doing this before Lambda existed. And I, I used to think Iron.io was the coolest thing ever. And then to see AWS come out with it, and then to just like have this whole platform around Lambda was super, super cool. It was Node.js at first, which was a travesty, uh, but then they added Python and um, it became good. So uh, the other half of the audience at reInvent there was a huge problem, right? Like, they didn't get it, it was just whoosh, and that was mostly the press. But it was also like uh, a bunch of people who were just not used to this kind of like event-driven web-based architecture. Uh, in 2017 at reInvent, no one was asking what serverless was. Uh, they were arguing about the name a lot. Um, but no one was asking, you know, what is this new paradigm that we're talking about? Everybody was asking about how can I use it? And I think that's a drastic change to see happen in the industry in just three short years. Um, and I think we're gonna blow your minds with like the next few years, so just stay tuned. Um, I think Ryan's gonna talk about that a little bit later. So, oh yeah, um, I'm a millennial. You guys have probably seen this demo before. Can we take a quick selfie? Is there any way to bring up the house lights? C'est possible les lumières de... No? Okay. On va essayer. Ready? One, two, three. And uh, with the, the, the prettier part of the audience. <laughs> That's because it doesn't have my AWS coworkers in it. Okay, that will be relevant later. Um, why should you listen to me? You shouldn't. Everything I'm saying is complete bullshit. Uh, I have no idea what I'm doing. I have no idea why I was invited here. Uh, these slides are not just mine. A lot of the stuff that you'll see here was actually worked on by a, a huge number of people at AWS who are very, very, very talented. You should definitely follow me on Twitter, though. Um, just do that. Now. Like, you all have your phones out. Go ahead. You will receive an automated la message powered by Lambda. Um, and then, I will say, this is, um, this is my actual, you know, regular corporate email. You also get responses from Lambda. If you email me and you say, hey, I was at your talk and I want to learn more about Lambda, I will send you a $100 AWS credit code. Not an Amazon credit code. Depending on which conference I'm at, that can sometimes be confusing. I will not pay for your, like, new thing from Amazon. But I will give you AWS credits. Uh, and I would encourage you to email me about any problems that you have with anything, ever. Um, like, what color should, should you paint your bedroom is an email that I've gotten before. Um, so, AWS Lambda is everywhere. So you guys know all about this whole shindig over here with step functions and API Gateway and all that good stuff. You know about all the different event sources. You know uh, about almost everything over here, probably. But did you know that you can buy a big hunkin' thing that you plug in uh, with fiber or, or, or Ethernet into your existing data center or in your office, or if you're working at AWS into your apartment, um, and you can run Lambda functions on that thing. It's a snowball, so you can get one of these, you can take it to your apartment, I, I mean um, data center, you can plug it in, and you can start running Lambda functions on it, and it's basically like an M4X large. Um, you can also deploy it to devices, so uh, I have one of these things, which is the AWS DeepLens. Um, I was going to demo this, but I'm not. <laughs> because uh, that whole deployment thing doesn't... It's in beta. <laughs> so, uh, you guys have seen all these slides before, I'm sure, like you guys, who here has seen this exact slide like 10 times before? 
for the purposes of any video that was 100% of the audience. Um, I don't want to talk about the basics today. I feel like a lot of us already know a lot about the basics of serverless. I would much prefer to like dive deep and actually build some stuff um, and talk about how people are building stuff now. These are all the customers that use AWS uh, and around like 999,000 others. Um, so first, a couple quick updates from reInvent until now. Uh, we, this is going to be relevant if any of you come to reInvent in 2018, so you should pay attention to the next slide, take a picture. Uh, there's like this big secret thing that we're going to do, and the SNS topic in the slide that's next is important, and I'm only going to show it for a second. Anyway, we updated the AWS Lambda console. Um, we made it pretty. Um, I don't ever use the console. Who, when was the last time you logged into the console? OK, for the purposes of any video, no one has ever logged into the AWS console. Um, I just use the CLI, but when I did log into the console, uh, one of the PMs for Lambda emailed me and was like, hey, why don't you check out our new console? And I checked it out, and damn, it was, it was very pretty. I like all these triggers and stuff, and it's big, and um, as I get older, my eyes can see it better. OK, quick, take your pictures. There's also the ACE editor embedded in the Lambda console now, which makes it easier to work on your functions, skipping that. Um, you can do per function concurrency. So let's say you have something that's supposed to hit um, a particular API, like Route 53, which is rate limited to like I think 1,000 requests per minute or something, um, or, or recognition, which has default rate limits built in. Um, you can actually go and change the number of Lambda invocations per sec uh, uh, concurrent functions that you're willing to run to be whatever number you want, typically over 9,000. Um, you can also deploy it from code deploy, uh, and you can do this whole canary shindig where you say, hey, I have, pardon me, I have um, this new Lambda that I've just built, and I want you to start directing traffic to this every couple of minutes. Um, and there are kind of two different ways of thinking about this. There's the the kind of A-B cutover, but then there's this idea of a canary. And a canary is something where you could go in and you could promote that canary deployment into a full production you know, system. Uh, and I'll talk a little bit about that in a moment. Uh, and this is done through API Gateway. You can kind of shift a percentage of your traffic between 0 and 100% over, slowly but surely. And you can continuously shift it. And then the really cool thing is with this canary release, uh, in API Gateway, you can have custom variables. So think about X-Ray, which is what you would typically use to do kind of your tracing. Um, or think about the levels of logging that you would use. Let's say you've got some Java lambdas deployed because you're still writing Java because... Um, uh, let's say that you have these out there. And as many of you, I'm sure, know, Java produces uh, verbose logs. Like, very, very verbose. Um, it's, can I swear? Uh -huh. It's a fuck ton of logging. It's just like unbelievable. It, and, and it's annoying, right? Like you, has anybody ever run Logstash? Like the amount of logs that Logstash itself produces is just absurd. But you can turn that off. But you don't want to when you're first deploying something. You actually want that stuff to stick around because you know, things are going to go wrong because we deployed a pro. I, I mean, um, we. Uh, we, uh, you know, we're, we don't have tests. I mean, we, um, we, we didn't have a test case for this one particular scenario, and something went wrong, so we had to examine the logs. But then we promote the canary back into a production deployment, and we can turn that logging off with just an environment variable. All of these things can be done quite easily now. Um, and then I know the immediate question is, why didn't we have this in the beginning? Um, and then AWS, API Gateway provides private VPC integrations. I do everything in public, so this is not important to me. But if it's important to you, um, just put it on VPC link mode. Very easy. Uh, we have the serverless application repository, which lets all of those customers that I showed you earlier um, get you to deploy applications. I have deployed an application. Does anybody have access to this yet? Um, if, you, if you want access to it, feel free to shoot me an email. Um, uh, it, it'll be going GA, I'm sure, quite soon. Um, there's a really, really, really cool application in the serverless application repo that I would strongly encourage you to check out. What it does is it takes an image and it replaces all the faces in the image with my face, um, which I think is just like an excellent, excellent, excellent use of time uh, and effort. 
So you should definitely check that out. But also, if you have like firewall rules or config rules, let's say uh, any EBS snapshot that hasn't been uh, restored from in the past two years, I want to delete it. Or any uh, EC2 instance that has had no CPU usage or relatively little CPU usage over the past one year, I want to delete it. All of this stuff, uh, it can already exist in the serverless application repo. Um, and then you can have fully fledged applications too. So let's say you want to deploy a chat app. You can just click, boom, deploy, done. And it has all that good stuff. Oh, and we made Lambda functions bigger. Uh, and we now have .NET and Go. Does anybody like Golang? It was a very enthusiastic roar. The microphone that's recording this just couldn't, um, it couldn't pick it up. Like Everybody was really excited about it. Uh, one of the really fun things that I found with Golang in our new Lambda deployments is that uh, we, <laughs> uh, we bill in a 100 millisecond minimum increment. And with Golang, that is definitely too much. Um, because I have functions now that are finishing in like four milliseconds. <laughs> okay, uh, and we also launched Aurora Serverless, and this is really, really cool. So here's the thing with Aurora Serverless, right? Uh, one of the key core tenets of serverless, or whatever, you know, Jeff, whatever word you want to call it, whatever this new paradigm is, one of the core tenets is the ability to scale down to nothing, uh, where you're not paying for idle. So imagine you, we bill in Aurora capacity units for this service, and this is a database. This is, you know, Postgres, MySQL, whatever. Um, and it's, it's global, um, you can have all of the backup or store, all of the other stuff that you're normally used to, but you don't have to think about individual nodes anymore. And this is something that's actually only possible in a large cloud provider. Like, I, I'm not saying like, we're the only ones who have this, like you could find similar technology elsewhere, but this is like the badass stuff that works uh, versus like the, the pretty stage demo. And uh, it's really, really cool to like, go and see your database that's serving you know, a billion transactions per second, then go down to like nothing. Um, if you go and look at Snapchat, uh, they use DynamoDB for their stories feature. Uh, and this was, this was a session at reInvent this year. And during New Year's, they have this terrible, terrible scaling problem. Luckily, it's predictable because it's New Year's. Um, and what they did was they, they ported everything over to DynamoDB for their stories feature. Uh, and of course, they, they're like multi-cloud. So they're using lots of different cloud providers, lots of different techniques. And, and this is kind of a cool story for, for me because it's, it's nice to see people using whatever tool fits the job. Like if something over at Azure works better or if something over at Google works better, use it. Get stuff done. I'm an engineer. I'm not like a salesperson. But to see them go from like, Five billion per second on DynamoDB, down to like nothing. Uh, a little bit later was bizarre. Um, and if you think about the stories feature in Snapchat, for those of you who are not familiar, uh, you you take a thing, you take a a video or a snap, I don't know what the hell it's called, um, and then you put emoji and shit all over it, um, and then you send it to like 15 million of your closest friends, uh, and then it times out 24 hours later. Now. Uh, you'd think DynamoDB TTL would be a great way of doing this, right? TTL, we have a terrible idea, terrible fucking idea. Um, this is what happens with the TTL collection, is exactly 24 hours later, you have to scale to the same load that you were already at um, to delete all of those pictures. So on Snapchat, what they do is they actually delete things slowly over time so that their, their write load stays relatively even. Um, there's a whole session about this, and. Uh, all kinds of other stuff that I can recommend to anybody. Um, but the idea of scaling down to nothing and paying only for what you're using is, I think, at the core of serverless. And with that, oh, and DynamoDB global tables and DynamoDB backup and restore. Oh, and people are asking why uh, backup and restore took so long to do. Keep in mind, backup and restore works the same for that, that table with like billions and billions of objects and hundreds of terabytes as it does for your table of selfies. So um, that is why it takes a while. Uh, oh, and then there was S3 Select. Does anybody know about this? This basically make, makes S3 a structured database. So you can, let's say you have CSV or JSON or something like that. You can go in and you can say, hey, I only want a portion of this. So rather than, let's say you have a five terabyte object, rather than pulling back all five terabytes, you can just say, hey, I want you know, one row uh, and these three columns, and I want you to give me only those back, and it comes over a custom wire protocol. It's just a protobuf. Um, protobuf, best library ever. Thank you, Google. Um, it just comes over a protobuf, and you can like, 
you know, it, it's a custom wire protocol that takes like two minutes for anybody to write in any language they want. Uh, that this is the end of my slides. So I was thinking now we might just like build something because that's what I was told to do. <clears throat> this is gonna suck. Okay, so um, this is called one and a half factors of authentication. It's the subject of my rejected PyCon talk. Um, and I've been told that I have to use uh, Cloud9. So we'll use Cloud9. This is an editor that we launched. This is not serverless, hence the name. And this remains by far, this, this, is, this is the thing that I never ever want to see ever again. Luckily, it starts up quite quickly. Um, while we're waiting for this, does anybody have any ideas for what we could build in the remaining 15 minutes of this talk? And I type it like 45 words per minute. Throw stuff out there. It is very likely I have like, you have to be into, est-ce qu'il y a des gens qui avaient les idées pour Shows of fair, EC. Uh, so, are there any ideas? Just shout something out. Anything at all. Something serverless. A, a, an airplane? A pipeline? Like a, C, a data pipeline? Awesome. Okay. Um, so, the best way to use Cloud9, in my opinion, is to uh, use Vim. <laughs> So we're going to do MKDIR. Uh, what is this? Uh, we're going we're gonna to call it Selfies Pipeline. So we're going to say Selfies Pipeline. And I have a um, collection. Being a millennial, I have, am I a millennial? I don't know what the generations are. But I have a collection of thousands upon thousands of pictures of my face because I'm very self-obsessed uh, being a millennial. And what we're going to do is we're going to take all of these different selfies and we're going to push them through recognition. This is the demo that we're going to do. Uh, if you come up with something better in 30 seconds, we'll do a completely different demo. Um, so first, I'm just going to copy all of this over. Um, S3 selfies bucket. I think it might actually be this. Uh, here, MKDR selfies. Uh, you know, I actually already have a function to do this. I'm just going to load that in. How do I lower this back down? No. Failed to load because of an unexpected error. Dun, 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 dun. There we go. Um, and it should just be called selfie. Yeah, selfies processing. Cool. Cannot import function. Okay, I guess we're writing it from scratch. So let's go, let's create a new Lambda function. We're going to call this selfies processor. Can only contain alphanumeric letters. Selfies processor, and we're going to go um, Python 3.6, empty Python, ba da ba da ba. Uh, no trigger for now. Um, we'll use all of the RAM because I don't pay my AWS bill. <laughs> um, cool. And then I have to close all of this to actually like, yes, yes, yes. OK. Um, OK, so then we go up here and we say S3 event. You can also do like SAM local and have it generate an event. So if you go tools, um, where is this? Uh, I need to like open up another terminal. So we have to go uh, pip install. Sam, there, Sam. Yeah, OK. So Sam, local, generate, event, S3. Um, so this is what the event looks like. And I'm just going to paste this in here so that I have some context. I'm, I'm rushing. So we'll say we want to um, import. Boto3, Boto3.client, recogni recognition. 
Um, and we'll call this rec, and then we'll say ddb equals boto3.client um, ddb.table. Oh, this is going to be a resource. Resource table. Um, what do we call this table? My fancy selfies. And then we'll create this really quickly. DynamoDB. This is typically something you would put in an environment variable, but um, I'm not a I'm not going to do that. Uh, and then we'll just say fn for like file name or something. Uh, use default settings, auto scaling. Uh, yeah, that'll work. Um, how do I get back? See, I'm so used to using vim and not this stuff. Um, OK, ddb. So then we're going to say for uh, record in event records. Um, oh, and we're going to need an S3 client too. S3. Will we need an S3 client? I don't think we will. Because we're just going to point. We're going to point recognition at the thing. So we're going to say um, rec.detect uh, faces or labels. What, what should we do? I think we'll do faces. Um, and then we'll say uh, image equals S3. I don't actually remember how to call this. So um, we'll go over here and I'll say IPython. No! Python. Um, That should work. You can tell I was quite prepared. How, what, this is, ends in like 45, right? At 45? Perfect. No. 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 Um, if I don't get this working in the next three minutes, we are going to switch over to a pre canned demo. Sorry. Um, See the selfies processor. Come on, piece of crap. Uh, cool. This table's done. Uh, and then we'll go into IPython. And I'll say import Boto3. And it'll be like, no Boto3. And then I'll do sudo pip3 install Boto3. Pip 3.6. No. Pip. I hate everything. sudo pip install boto3. IPython import boto3. It's still not going to work. Oh, it worked. Uh, rec equals boto3.client rec. Come on. Recognition. And then we say uh, help rec.detect faces help. And it takes an S3 object that looks like this shindig here. Um, so then we say, what does it look like? S3 object. And then bucket is going to be um, uh, record S3. Don't ever code like this in prod. This is like how 90% of the internet runs, though. Um, bucket name. And then we need to do, is it name? One of the things that bothers me about this is that it's not consistent. Name. This is very exciting to watch me code, isn't it? I know you guys are just riveted. Absolutely riveted. Um, and then we go record S3 uh, object key. Um, and then we're just going to do ddb.put item. Oops. Yeah, that's right. Dot put item item equals that. Um, and that's not going to work. But we're going to deploy it. Um, anyway, so come on. Why is this? Oh, this is not real code yet. 
This is real code. We've done it. Sort of. So lambda function, Selvi's processor, deploy to prod. We'll hop back over to the console thingy. What the hell is a console? They put Cloud9 in front of it? How rude. Uh, and then we'll add a trigger. How do I add a trigger? Five minutes, S3, trigger, objects added. Uh, and then I don't really care about the suffix or anything. Um, and now we are going to be rate limited by recognition very quickly. So I'm going to say, um, I'm going to do this from a server because uh, doing it from my local laptop will make all of your internets go down. Uh, 7,000 selfies. Here we go. AWS S3 CP. Uh, AWS S3 CP. Um, S, so come on. Oh, I probably should have made that work for a specific bucket, right? What bucket did I put? This is not the right bucket. I'm sorry. Just putting in the right bucket here. Um, selfies bucket. Add. And then save. Go. Do things. Ambiguously defined. Overlapping suffixes. for the same event type. I don't know what that means. Um, but we're out of time. So we're going to do it in Java. Um, because, <laughs> because that's what the one that I already have working is. So S3, uh, or no, we're going to do sync this directory with S3 selfies bucket. Ba -da -ba -da -ba, and then we'll go to like totally the function that I just wrote and, and not my fake one, and then we will um, briefly see the most rate limiting. I got a phone call from like the PM on the recognition team once because I did this in like three regions at once, um, and I, I just like I, Lambda gives me all the concurrency I want uh, because I love them, and so I just completely hammered the service, and they were like, "Can you please calm down?" Um, it's like your selfies are not as important as like customers who are doing real work. And I'm like, everybody's using this to detect pictures of cats like, or hot dogs. Like, <laughs> no, people are using recognition for some really cool stuff. So we're getting some errors already. But you can see we're getting some cool stuff going on, 2,500 executions. It's still going, 23 megabits per second. We can view the traces in x-ray. Um, we can look at the service map here. Uh, da, da, da. Come on. And then we can go and we can look in DynamoDB and see what the actual results are, which are, come on. Oh, and this is auto scaling, which is cool. It can scale to 40,000 units, because again, I don't pay my AWS bill. Um, so this is, this is what it says. Curtain, human, face. Well, face is pretty likely, you know. Um, human, lamp, couch, Afro hairstyle. Interesting. Um, <laughs> electronics, face, bed, grand piano. And it has like the location and confidence value. And I have exactly 60 seconds remaining. And I'm hopeful that the service map will render. God. Mm. Um, but Wi-Fi being what it is. Uh, turned off. Uh, it's not, there we go. Uh, so you can see, like in here, you can see this purple means I'm being throttled. So over here, I'm throttled. I am going to yield the rest of my time for a single question from anybody in the audience who can ask it in like 20 seconds. Anybody, any questions? Great, wonderful. I have two slides. Um, there is a constant continuum of compute. You can deploy Lambda functions uh, you know, in the cloud, or you can deploy them all the way over on your smart doorbell. And then, and then, and then, 
Um, functions work everywhere, blah, 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 continuum. Uh, watch me on Twitch. I'm awesome. It's really fun. We code and things work. They don't break. Uh, thank you so much for your time. Bye, guys. Yeah.